Liverpool have rejected a bid from Southampton for £15 million. Meaning that, first of all, Southampton want Fabio Carvalho. As Rossa Martin has said, we were close to getting a loan deal for him this January, fascinatingly. Although, also kind of predictably. But also that Liverpool value him at almost double that, £28 million plus pounds, And so Southampton have got quite a way to make that up. But teams don't make bids unless they've been encouraged by someone or someone in a team has said, we need something politically to work with here. What can you do? And Southampton have very willingly stepped in considering how valuable of a player he will be, especially to a team in the bottom half who are looking for goals out of nothing, contributions and very practical uh, output in terms of what Fabio Carvalho actually provides. Remember what he did at Hull last season. Remember what he did in Europe. I think we do forget that Fabio, especially remember what he did for Liverpool when he was first starting there as well. I think a lot of the time people underestimated what this kid was probably capable of. And the hype that he had when he first signed for Liverpool was certainly justified. I think he's a very talented player out on the field. And we've seen a lot of him in this preseason. We've seen like, you know, sevens and eights in terms of journalists rating him for game contribution, but also practical output in terms of goals, like him actually scoring, him actually doing something and putting Liverpool in a stronger position for being on the field. Ultimately though, I think the reason that Klopp probably let him go and the reason that other managers probably didn't include him in all the starting 11s was because of his overall contribution to the team. Now, you can read that in a number of ways and I think it's very important to tell people's stories or at least explore people's stories in a meaningful and charitable way. Fabio Carvalho, still a very young player, still a very talented guy, someone who came to Liverpool relatively young with very big hype, not least because he probably followed in the footsteps of people like Harvey Elliott other hyped young players who made great contributions from the 10 slash wingy type positions. But the point of Fabio was he knew he was good. And I think there was a point at Liverpool where he wanted more minutes and Klopp just couldn't offer them to him. And I don't know if his reaction was one that we would all want him to have. At least that's what I've heard privately from a couple of people. I'm not saying that I think he's a player that has a bad attitude. I'm not saying I think he's a player who doesn't deserve to be at Liverpool because he, you know, he's trying to push for something. I'm just saying people who want to start want minutes. And is he necessarily going to get that when in pre-season, I think maybe you've been slightly misled in the sense that no other Liverpool left winger has been there. And so he's had the position all to himself. It has given him time maybe to put a bit of a stamp on things. He's definitely gone out there and put his name towards that side of the field. And he's definitely gone out there and made Liverpool players around him take notice as well. You can see Salah's relationship with Fabio. Salah's, a number of different players' relationships with Fabio is very good, not least the relationship between Harvey Elliott and Fabio Carvalho. Another reason why maybe he might stick around this season. But on top of that, Gakpo wasn't there. Oh, Cody Hakpo wasn't there. Uh, you could see Luis Diaz clearly is a player who is very talented. But, you know, maybe if he was to leave Liverpool, we might keep Fabio Carvalho in that area. But at the same time, if he was to leave Liverpool, would you not expect Liverpool to sign a really talented winger or a really talented player who can get out wide just like Arneslot wants him to do? Arneslot was forced to adapt a little bit in the preseason and explore the squad. Obviously, now the big guns are back. We're probably going to see a very changed team when it comes to the Sevilla team and then the Las Palmas game behind closed doors later that day. And then, of course, I think we will see quite a changed side when it comes to, first of all, uh, Liverpool playing Ipswich, but secondly, them just managing minutes towards the end of that transfer window. Let's not forget. Liverpool didn't have a majority of their first team back for a majority of this time. So training, all those kind of things, takes time for a lot of these bigger players. And it gave Fabio Carvalho some time to get out there. His previous relationship with Klopp, sidelined. Michael Edwards won't be thinking about I mean, they will be thinking about it. They'll be taking that into account. But they won't be thinking, OK, you've had that relationship with him. What relationship are you going to have with me? There's very different kinds of dynamics. There's one director of football, there's one guy who's got to manage him on a daily basis. What is it that Slot thinks he can get out of someone like Fabio Carvalho? Alongside that, I think he's also a player who definitely justifies the price tag, £30 million. If Liverpool can get £30 million for a player like Fabio Carvalho and they can get someone like Nat Phillips out the door, we're seeing a number of players now linked with different moves away. Liverpool are beginning to talk about loans, they're beginning to talk about permanent transfers, especially for Sepp and for Nat Phillips. 
So I think at the back there, we're certainly looking at changes. And that front line is also looking pretty stacked now. We probably need five or six options. And he will probably be, let's be honest, in most people's, at least paper lineup, the sixth option or the third option out on that left wing. Especially considering that Luis Diaz is a more out-and-out -out winger. Cody Gakpo is certainly a more out-and-out -out winger, but also someone who can cut in from the left, probably with a similar ability to Carvalho. We've not even seen what his ability is. And also Fabio, as good as he is in training, as good as he might be in pre-season, you've got to remember it is still pre-season. You're going up against people who aren't nearly as talented as a majority of these Premier League wingers and also probably aren't nearly as fit as they will be two, three, four, five weeks from now. Fabio is very talented and I think he certainly will be a Premier League player, a very high-end player. But the real question is at what level? And I mean, like, you know, we're talking top tier, we're talking the next tier, we're talking the next tier below that. There was a time when, when he was loaned out, he wasn't really getting a starting berth, maybe because he wasn't part of that manager's uh, initial plans and they just wanted someone as a squad filler. They wanted someone who was talented. Liverpool wanted to see him go away and get minutes, but there was a time where he wasn't getting minutes. And so what is it you're meant to do with him then? But also Liverpool have to, if they are going to have this policy of staying within PSR, which is probably roughly where we're at, but also, you know, if we are going to make some transfers, we're going to have to move some people on. But also if Liverpool are going to have this policy of bringing young players in, not all of them are going to make it. Not all of them are going to be in a position where it's like, okay, you get into the first team. It would be great if everyone could make it through the academy and then make it straight into the first team. But there are only 23 spots on that team. And in a modern side where, let's face it, you are using units of players, some players will be starters. Some players will be those second units or those third units when you want to change your shape, when you want to change your emphasis, when you want to change where you're going to get a goal from. And I think if Fabio Carvalho is thinking, I want to be a starter for Liverpool... And it totally depends on what slot wants him to do. And at the moment, I don't know if he profiles like one of those wide slot wingers that pulls the back line far apart, or if he profiles more like one of those players that when Liverpool want to change things up, they will go down that route. The real question is, what would he be comfortable with? What would Fabio Carvalho say? Well, actually, I will accept that role at Liverpool this season because I'm not going to go to a Manchester United. I'm not going to go to a PSG. I'm not going to go to another massive side. And I'm going to fight for my position. And also, I'm going to be happy to be a second unit going out there and changing the shape for slot, proving that I can play these roles, proving that I can get these minutes. And also, creating stronger relationships with the players around him, more reason for those people to stay, taking probably a better wage at somewhere like Liverpool than if we probably get at somewhere like Southampton or anywhere else in the Premier League right now. And also, probably staking more of a claim to getting into under-21 sides England setups, those kind of things, because higher end managers are going to be looking at those kind of players. I've got to admit, I think, especially when you look at Fabio, I think he's an extremely talented player, but I, I still see him on the fringes of this team because, you know, Luis Diaz, Gakpo, they are the starting guys out there. Nunes is probably also out on that left wing if he's not starting out as a striker. And we're probably going to look for a striker who can run out to those positions and work the front line a little bit more. Fabio has been often compared to Filipe Coutinho, and I think it is a, it's a very valuable point to make here. Coutinho was a talismanic-style player for Liverpool for a long time, especially under Brendan Rodgers, but early on in the Klopp era. But ultimately, Jurgen Klopp chose to let him go. I know he was pushing for that move, but he was pushing because he wanted to leave Liverpool because he thought there was a higher ceiling there. He thought there was a higher ceiling for his career, but also what he could achieve. Fabio Cavalli might not be exactly like that, but the comparisons with Coutinho have been there. I'm not 100% sure. I think the fact he's small, the fact he is tricky, help him a lot, like in that comparison. But I don't think he's a Coutinho type player. He's not, a, I'm going to go out there and change the game type player. I know he's done some very special things, but systems require different things to what Coutinho did. And that's partially why when Coutinho moved away, he didn't thrive in the way that people thought he would. My point is, Klopp moved him on and he was moved on because he wanted to leave the club, because he wanted more minutes, because he thought he had a higher ceiling. The same goes for Fabio here. What is it that he wants his career to be? What is it that he's willing to sacrifice in this time in order to get ahead later on down the line? Harvey Elliott, a great model. Fabio is probably looking across at him going, I'm mates with him. I feel like an equal to him. He's probably looking around him in the squad and going, I'm technically ahead of all these other guys. But physically, is he ahead of everyone else? Is he, does he fit what Slot wants in terms of pace? Does he fit what Slot wants in terms of 
ball ability in terms of I can get this pass out here, I can get this pass out there. I think his movement is fantastic. I think slots used him very well, but in preseason managers can afford to do that. Look at what United did last night. Look at what Arsenal did against Liverpool. They're just slotting different players in there and seeing how they play. That's not an indication necessarily of what a manager is going to do long term for him. I'm not saying therefore he can't, he doesn't have ability, he can't fit into this team. But what I'm saying is we just have to look at what stories we're telling within the fan base here. And if we sell someone like Fabio Carvalho or ask him to go on loan, I don't think that's always the most negative thing. Liverpool will have plans. And if you don't fit them, frankly, I think it's down to the fan base to support those plans and those ideas and do their best to back up whatever it is that the Liverpool setup is doing. I'd love to know what you guys think. There's probably going to be a lot of loans, a lot, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of sales over the next couple of weeks, or at least attempted sales. And we're going to see a lot of people questioning a setup and using it to poke at FSG or Michael Edwards or whatever. Give these time, people time to get some of their feet under the table, please. I'm not saying I'm FSG like diehard. Like I think they've done a good job of getting Liverpool where they are. And I'm, I'm very critical of some of the things they've done financially, you know. But I think staying inside PSR, being very financially uh, frugal and smart with your money is an, a modern part of the game, considering where Barcelona are at, considering where a number of teams are at with punishments and staying within the financial rules. And I certainly think that when it comes to young talent, if they don't want to be one of those backup guys who earn their place in the team, and we'll see whether Fabio is one of those guys, then it's time to move on. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you again on the channel later today. Much love.